is AI being applied to behavioral science? My guest is Michael Mueller. He is vice president of Aperio Consulting Group. Hello, Michael. Hey, Bob. It's good to be here. So when I think of terms like behavioral science and emotional intelligence, the last thing I think that is going to give us any insight into that would be artificial intelligence. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, what is, uh, is AI actually playing an extensive role in behavioral science today? And if so, what way? Great question. There's a surprising connection between these two fields. And, and one way that we might think about it, a paradigm, if you will, to really understand the, the relationship between these two fields is behavioral science is really this, we, we should deter, I really define this term, but it's really Please, this, yeah. this um, yeah, it's this, it's this combination of a couple different fields. It looks at neuroscience, social psychology, and psychology to really help us capture a lot of really rich data, especially related to people. And so one of the ways that we think about behavioral science is that it's, a, it's an incredibly rich data collection science that helps us understand a lot of nuance and complexity with human beings. Um, the challenge and the hurdle of this is that, that incredibly rich and complex data can be difficult to make sense of and to make practical. And so artificial intelligence proves to be a really beautiful complement to behavioral science to help us make sense of this data, um, to really help it drive decisions in the workplace. And so we find that this one-two punch is collecting a lot of rich, complex data and then processing it, translating data into information so humans can draw insight and take action. Interesting. This proves to be incredibly yeah. complex. So what is AI teaching us about behavioral science we didn't know before? What kind of preconceptions, what kind of assumptions that we had all along that have actually proved to be incorrect? Well, one of the things that we do as a consulting firm today, and we're, we're dealing with a lot of organizations that are trying to be smarter in their decision making uh, as in regards to hiring the right candidates, uh, promoting or developing the right employees. And, and one of the things we find is that um, it, when, when there's a lot of complex data, and, and we're often we're collecting what would be considered psychometric data, it's a form of behavioral science data, it's ways of measuring different aspects of our humanity. And, and really in the absence of a way to make sense of that data, um, there's a lot of heuristics, there's a lot of subjective decision-making. Really what AI is doing is revealing these, these connections that exist within the psychometric data and helping us really overcome what's been a very intuitive and subjective decision-making process. Okay, uh, so it's taking, the, again, just having the data there is, is great, but somehow making sense of it and determining patterns, which of course is what you know, the human brain does, best and AI also tries to do. So it, it makes us see patterns in behavior that we didn't see before. Is that part of the conclusion that we're seeing? Here's a specific example that may be useful for us. We worked with an organization uh, out of Denver. They were a sales organization that had a very common practice for hiring salespeople. You could picture the, the strongly extroverted, uh, courageous, willing to knock on any door, make the hard ask salesperson. Mm -hmm. And while it's true, that that, I'll say that profile has been successful for the organization. We found within the data and artificial intelligence helped us reveal that there were other profiles that were actually capable of being the highest performers. There, there was a little bit of a non-obvious path. These were strongly introverted individuals that needed a different onboarding experience. They came up through customer service. They developed competence in the subject matter and in the products and, and some of the nuances of the customer experience. But what happened was as the introverted individuals grew up within customer service, when they hit the field, when, when they joined outside sales, they were actually the highest performing salespeople. And so AI helped us find this predictive anomaly, this, this profile that, that we would have overlooked and the human brain may not have found as we were scanning vast amounts of data, but AI could find it. And, and we find that really the, the subjective heuristics that we use to make decisions a lot of times, um, well, it can be outperformed at times by artificial intelligence that can, can recognize these these patterns that exist in complex, vast data sets. Yeah, let's just uh, define heuristics as maybe rules of thumb, uh, traditional ways in which we, you know, make 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 decisions. And this is a bringing new new insight to that whole idea. Correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I also think about the term emotional intelligence. Once again, I think, oh boy, that is just so inherently human. And here we have an artificial system that is leading us to understand it. Is indeed that the fact that AI can help us to probe the mysteries and the uh, conclusions of emotional intelligence? I think this goes back to this conversation around really collecting objective data. And really, behavioral science has been attempting for years to help us 
uh, really grow in our self-awareness by taking, perhaps you've even taken an emotional intelligence assessment before, a way of measuring your self-awareness and your social awareness. Well, AI can, can really analyze that data in new and innovative ways, helping us understand it more, uh, more richly, more deeply, and, and really apply the data in our leadership development. And so uh, a specific example here might be something like, uh, Bob, if you were to take an emotional intelligence assessment and find that there were um, certain areas of the assessment that you had an opportunity to improve, AI could help you identify the best path towards developing those competencies and really go deeper than just um, describing the results for you. It can actually help prescribe and take action on the results you read. And so mm -hmm. emotional intelligence, this incredibly human quality, um, it, it remains a human quality. AI can just simply augment or supplement our emotional intelligence journey by helping us apply emotional intelligence data and really um, take the next step forward in improving our emotional intelligence. And can it learn through experience? I mean, we have the, the phrase machine learning, which I guess is an offshoot or an aspect of AI. Uh, does it get better with continued use and more input, more data input? Yes, I think inherent in, in the way that machine learning, artificial intelligence algorithms are trained, they, they will improve over time. And, and here's maybe a really unique place where behavioral science and, and, uh, and computational intelligence or artificial intelligence can merge. If, if we train algorithms using um, very black and white data, then let's pick a chatbot, for instance, that artificial intelligence technology powering a chatbot is going to spit out answers that are very black and white and two-dimensional. But if instead we use what we know to be true in behavioral science, that there are a variety of different personality styles and profiles that exist, we can actually enhance the emotional intelligence and enhance the humanness of the training data that a chatbot is trained on, and the results are more human responses. And mm -hmm. so this is a little bit of a different intersection, but uh, put simply, it would be using behavioral science to enhance the humanness of training data so that artificial intelligence responses can engage on a more human level so that they sound and engage in a more human way. So the degree to which this actually manifests itself in the real world, you alluded to some aspects of hiring and training. Where else and where, where can this be a particular value in the business, business world? Well, hiring and, and learning and development are two areas that are, are really common today. I think researchers will continue to explore different opportunities to apply it, but I may zoom in on just hiring and learning development for just one moment. Um, there's a number of, of different companies that use uh, psychometric assessments today. I think any pre-hire assessment is hopefully an empirical. By the knowledge. way, when you say psychometric, what do you really, what, could you define that term for me? Of course, it, it is a, it's an instrument, an empirically validated or scientifically validated assessment that really measures human qualities in a very objective way. So you may be familiar with with some that are really popular in the market that may measure an individual's degree of extroversion or introversion. Mm -hmm. It's simply an objective assessment that helps you label certain aspects of your personality. That's psychometrics in a nutshell. Okay. okay. And so this becomes a value in the business world, uh, in, as you say, in hiring, in training. What about making business decisions that up to this point were purely the, the, the area, the domain of the human being? Now you've got an artificial intelligence uh, machine. It's telling you, what's it doing? Is it making decisions? Is it giving the human being a lot of different options and letting the human make the final determination? Are we going forward to a time when the AI machine will make all the decisions? Where, where are we in the business world right now on that, on that scale? We are seeing the entire spectrum. So on, on the far end of the spectrum, you would have a completely automated remote processing automation algorithm where a human has encoded a set of specific instructions that the computer will carry out. Mm -hmm. And then on the far end of the spectrum, on the other side, you have a completely human decision. Here in the middle, we have what's called a human in the loop algorithm. It's going to be an algorithm where rather than completely automating a decision, the, the computer is going to make a recommendation. It's going to augment rather than replace human decision-making, presenting not only predictions, but explanations of why the algorithm is predicting a certain explanation. So back to the hiring example. Uh, Bob, there are, there are a number of algorithms out there. M maybe you've heard of neural networks or convolutional neural networks. Those are going to be algorithms that, that make a recommendation, but its computing occurs within a black box. And, and the challenge there is, you have two candidates and perhaps they score dramatically different and you disagree as the human, you know, what then you're in conflict with the computer. 
or perhaps you have two candidates that are that are predicted to have the exact same uh, fit for the role. Well, then the computer wasn't all that helpful because it didn't direct you one way or the other. Mm -hmm. But instead, if we have an explainable algorithm where the, the recommendations are, are not only presented as a, a predicted outcome, but really leaves you with instructions for why somebody scored the way they scored, then the human can interact. This is a shared interface where the human can engage with those results and, and exercise discretion and, oh, and make discerning choices. It's a, it's a totally different augmented partnership with computers as opposed to just replacing them outright. So the black box becomes in effect a glass box. You can actually see what the computer went through and how it came to its conclusion. That's right. We, we like to say that there's a window. Into Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. So what are the limits of AI in this field as it now exists? What can AI not do very well? And, and might that be enhanced in the future? AI is only as good as the data that trains it. And so one of the things that we see as a limitation isn't really an artificial intelligence limitation. It's a behavioral science limitation. It's a it's a we have not found the right sequence of asking the right questions, collecting the appropriate data in order to train the algorithm to solve the problem. And so a specific example might be here, and this is a little bit of a computer science term, but my, my data scientist on our team would often ask the question, how do we know that this training data set is generalizable? And, and really what he's asking is, have we captured in this training data set that's gonna be used to train the algorithm, um, a set of circumstances that accurately represents reality? And so there's some really famous examples here, and some of them are, are tragic in nature. But if, if we train an algorithm using a biased data set, then the algorithm is only as good as that data set. And so right. we believe there should be strongly um, a strong consideration given to ensuring that the data set is, is representative of the sample and mm -hmm. that it's going to re result in a fair and unbiased algorithm. And so, so we as humans need to do better on the input side. Because it's going to spit out if, if we are if we are biased, the conclusions are going to be biased as well, right? That's right. But Bob, technology yeah. is neutral. And so the algorithm is is only as good as the data that feeds it. It can be used for incredibly productive purposes or it can be counterproductive if it's not trained appropriately. No, oh, interesting. Well, AI certainly has come far, maybe has a lot more ways to go, but in the meantime. Uh, Michael Mueller of Aperio Consulting Group, thanks for bringing me up to date on just where this very important tool plays a role in the business world and elsewhere and helps us to understand behavioral science. Thank you very much for being with me. Appreciate it. Of course. Thank you, Bob.